All right, we are live. Welcome again. Watchers Talk Live, coming to you live around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good morrow, depending on where in the world you are tuning in. I am your host, Leonard O'Neill. Today, I'm going to do a couple of shout-outs real quick, and we're going to get right into it. Nothing real long. I know some days I spend four, four minutes or so, not quite, but you know how it is. All right, first shout-out, I, I want to say uh, Sherry Putnam. She is our coordinating director. Without her... We would not have any of this possible. We would be pulling our teeth out, pulling our hair out. Omar and I would be trying to work overtime to try and get this stuff done. She is a great asset to everything that we do here, and without her, like I said, without her, it'd be, it'd be rough. So thanks, 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 Sherry. You do a great job. Crow, you do a great job. Keep it up. Okay, also, yesterday, if you guys didn't tune in, you guys missed Brian Forrester was here yesterday. He was on. He was live. We had a great talk. We only got an hour out of him, but he's going to come back, and we're going to do some more. So watch our calendar. He says he's going to come back every a few months and do some stuff with us. So watch the calendar, guys. We're also uh, in the works for planning a few things for maybe uh, uh, 2018, 2019. Might be some exciting stuff coming up. So pay attention to what that's going on. I'd like to say thanks to Brian Forrester for coming on here yesterday. Um, I was like a, a giddy little schoolboy trying to talk to him because he's one of the one of the guys that are just like you know know everything on the on the face of the earth. <clears throat> Today we have. Daniel Dunn, a.k.a. Daniel of Doria, and if you guys here in the West don't know who he is, ask Brian Forrester who he is, because he, they, those guys know each other, because they've been working together, I mean, kind of together. He and uh, Daniel, uh, back in the day when nobody, when there wasn't much going on, and Facebook wasn't as huge as it is now, he's been doing this kind of stuff for over 10 years, and he's been helping promote these guys in the UK who uh, no one even knew who they were, and, and uh, you can go to his uh, Facebook Facebook page, you can see that, that he, he was doing that, especially his YouTube page, I mean, and, and you can see that. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to go uh, too much more in detail without having our guest uh, speaking here. So, uh, Daniel, say hello to the to the world. Hi, everybody. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being on here. Uh, Daniel's been been very shy in, in his career and hasn't done a lot of interviews. Just so you guys know, um, he he's been very he's very humble uh, and he doesn't do a lot of interviews. But he uh, has done a couple come out and done a couple lately. Um, he's done one uh, radio show that you can catch. I was just listening in on that on his uh, uh, Facebook page, and then of course uh, here uh, we're we're really uh, glad to have him come out and and start promoting himself because. He doesn't really do a lot of that and hasn't in the past, but he's just written a couple of books that we're going to talk about, uh, but we're going to talk about everything, really, uh, but he's just written a couple of books that we, they were really, he's really proud of, and, and you guys should check them out. Uh, we'll get into that. So uh, why don't we start with, uh, I always like to start out with asking questions uh, of our, our guest. If you watch my show, you know that. Um, tell us about you. Tell us about how you got uh, involved uh, in everything, when now all that happened for you, and how that evolved to where you uh, got to where we are today. Wow. Well, that's uh, you know that's a giant context. You know, it's like an entire life. You know, condensed. But um, <laughs> we basically, got we got time. Take your time. I know, I know, I know. And that, that's a great thing. You know, right. you know. And uh, well, basically, it started. Um, you know, when I was born. Basically, you know, I've always been this kind of way. Anyway, you know, wanted to grow and expand my mind, and um, you know, just move forwards basically, in uh, everything I do. So I've always been expansive and, you know, infinite. I call it, you know, the path of infinite expansion is what I call it, you know. And um, I've always just been learning and, uh, you know, I've always, you know, just warmed to this kind of stuff. It's like uh, the indigenous tribes. It's naturally inbuilt into them anyway, you know, the way they are, you know, the way they live. And, you know, this is just how I have been. And obviously it gets more refined as I go forwards and stuff. But, um, you know, you know, I've kind of just always been this way, to be honest with you. Yeah, and uh, and then I got onto um, YouTube in 2008, which uh, you know it's a time when a lot of people got on there. There was like a wave of consciousness, you know, the one of the three waves that I call it anyway. And uh, one happened in 2008, and uh, you know, in the summer of 2008, and a lot of people, even uh, Magenta Pixie, who uh, has her own YouTube channel, who I did the interview with that you were talking about uh, the yeah. other day, you saw the radio interview. I, uh, you know, we kind of like got into the YouTube at the same time. You know, me and her and a lot of other people as well you know like these little circles that some of them as well are still like really strong um forged friendships you know all the way from back then so it's been a decade now and obviously you know that kind of like um time passing by you get to really see the person grow into who they are you know what i mean and you know be there as well when they need stability and you know they need help and guidance and stuff you know you can be there you know you can be like that um 
person to, you know, so they can fall back on you, if you know what I mean, and then you can help them forwards to keep going and have that motivation and inspiration, you know. So there's, you know, a lot more to this conscious awakening than people realise, you know, that there is a lot of people that are in the background that, you know, you're not even going to realise are there really, and some of those are the most potent um, beings you can even possibly imagine, you know, in all of this rise, but it's like a building, you need many different layers, you know, to be able to construct it, and obviously there's the foundational pillars that need to be the strongest out of the whole structure to be able to support the weight and everything, you know, it's kind of like that thing, but yeah, there was an awakening in uh, 2008, and then it just went on to like 2010 towards the end and stuff and then there's kind of like another awakening that occurred and then obviously it um, like climaxed into the end of the Mayan time meter of evolution you know which is they call it the calendar but it's you know the Mayans didn't create the calendar it's not a calendar to them it's um, an evolution of consciousness for all different stages you know as it goes and um, you know that's how consciousness works and that's how it's been working on a microcosmic level between individuals as well you know as we've been going forward so, you know, it kind of got to the 21st December 2012, and, you know, that was the third big wave. And then since then, we've been into this new context, basically, of uh, kind of like instant manifestation as well, you know, where you, uh, your thoughts can instantly manifest things within your life if you hold the focus, you know, your focal point on, uh, you know, different things and stuff. And, well, obviously, since 2008... It's um, it's just been one crazy uh, ride, really, you know, becoming more refined, becoming more powerful, and every time that a person came along, I would help them as well. I'd be in the background helping them. If there's anybody with good information that I thought was worthy of uh, preserving and getting out to people, I'd be there in the background who's doing it. So I've helped all kinds of people, like even people like um, Santos Benaki as well, with all this uh, stuff that he's done, because I really liked all the law stuff and all of the uh, things he was saying as well, and the astrotheology and about all the stars and everything. Then there was, like, um, Dan Winter <coughs> with, um, like, all the um, galactic DNA and talking about all the galactic core cultures and, um, you know, the um, all the stuff that he was doing and stuff about DNA and bliss and about uh, sungasms, you know, and creating that electrical charge within the human body and within the DNA, which is, you know, one of the most, you know, important things, really, is the electrical charge. And uh, in my work as well, that's basically what it goes into. That, I mean, that's one of the most important things is, you know, presence inside the person because, you know, ultimately that's the only thing that separates the whole entire spectrum of human life and, you know, whole life in the cosmos is how present are you to yourself, you know, and how present are you to others and how present are you to the environment in which you live and everything, you know. All right. Right, I apologize if you hear that lawnmower going by. He's literally cutting the lawn about <laughs> 30 feet away from me right now. So he just went down. He'll be back again. Hopefully he'll get it done quickly, and, and we will. Uh, it won't interfere with what you're saying, so I apologize for that. But, I, you know, I agree with you because I remember uh, back in 2008, um, I was I was doing the Ancient Aliens thing here on Facebook, but on YouTube I was, I was actually, because I wrote my first two books then, and uh, they weren't on uh, Ancient Aliens at all. And uh, I was doing uh, stuff on videos on, you can still see them there, on my channel there about prepping and uh, getting ready in case something happened. There was a cataclysm. And see, he's, he's going by. He's got another. Looks like he's got two more. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be done. So bear with us, people. I got a lot more guy. I can't do anything about these landscapers that are paid to do this. So, <clears throat> but, I, but I was doing that during that wave. I was, I was uh, doing uh, more non-spiritual stuff, more more physical based stuff at the time on YouTube, but on, on Facebook I was, uh, I have a spiritual group on Facebook and I have this ancient aliens group, so I was splitting my time between the two uh, as, as time came forward, and I didn't realize until uh, this, you know, until probably about uh, or maybe uh, nine months ago or maybe a, maybe a year ago, how much all of that was fitting together as a whole, and I didn't see it as a whole, I saw it as separate. And, yeah. Um, that, yeah. And that's why my, my first two books were two books and not one. I, I thought about writing them as one book. Uh, the first book is about uh, global banking and, and how to get out of debt, and the other one is about prepping. And I wrote them as one. When I should have, I wanted to write them as one, but um, the publisher uh, at the time said, no, you're going to, those are two different audiences. Now I know they weren't. <laughs> right? no, no, yeah, yeah, it's so, true. It's, it's right. like, uh, yeah. With all, yeah, with all the stuff that I've done, um, right. basically I've, I've covered the full spectrum of absolutely everything. I mean, right. the original Raising Eden series was, um, I, I built it over three years. It was right. a series that I did for free on YouTube that 
I've just placed back on YouTube because uh, I also have the most suppressed channel within human history as well, and two of my channels actually went down within the past week itself. So I've uh, I've reuploaded the uh, the original Raising Eden playlist with all of the original trailers as well, and like I said, it's um, it's a 53 part series series eight and a half hours long it covers absolutely everything all in one place basically the full spectrum of everything from you know ufos to spirituality to atlantis the awakening the banking system you know and everything in between as well and i've just placed that back online and you know originally it was like seen by millions of people and it had um, you know been translated into five different languages and it's been seen um, you know all over the place and people have the only reason why it survives now is because uh, so many people helped to re-upload it that it's actually survived on their channels. So I've like I've taken all the pieces from different channels and I've uploaded uh, a few of the trailers onto a different channel that I created the other day and I put it all into one place again. So it's back on my Daniel of Doria channel now on YouTube, right. which is it's just Daniel of Doria, all one word with two A's at the end. You know, because my original channel, Daniel of Doria, just got deleted. You know, as well uh, back in the day. That was back in 2010. It was like two years old. But, you know, so at that point, I had to make a decision whether I was going to go on or whether I was going to, you know, give up. But I decided to just, obviously, just keep going on because this is me, you know, this is my life, this is who I am. So, yeah, so, so let's, let's, let's get into that. Uh, why don't you tell uh, everybody what, because you've got two books, so let's talk about the first book, right? So, uh, so it's the, it is the uh, Raising Eden, Eden series, and the first book is uh, Wisdom of uh, the Eternal, is that correct? Why don't, you, yeah. why don't you tell everybody what your uh, your books are about? Start with the first one, uh, and and then go to the second one because I, I it's very fascinating that it, you know you have all these quotes because the whole book is quotes, uh, but it, it's it's one of those books where um, you can read all the way straight through, like you talked about in your other interview. You can read it from cover to cover if you want, uh, or or the, you know, or you could just uh, you know like like she was talking about, open it up uh, and 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 you know take your chances and see how that uh, works and fits in with your uh, the way you feel. But just explain to people what the whole concept is about your books and why you wrote them. <clears throat> right. Well, basically. Um you know, I was just using the best parts of myself, you know, my most uh, potent, powerful strengths to be able to uh, bring them forward and give them as a gift, you know, for humanity and the world. And, um, you know, that's what everybody has in their life. They have a gift and they have to, you know, give it to the world because our gifts aren't even made for us. They're not meant for us. They're meant for the world to be, you know, put into the world. And that's how you can move the world forward and stuff. So it, it really just started, um, you know, from a vision that I had a long time ago. It was two different timelines. One was a timeline I saw that was really, really beautiful where the human race was exploring the stars in these giant, you know, space, you know, spacecraft, like cigar shaped ones. And um, it was just absolutely beautiful, like Edens within uh, the crafts and stuff and everything, like miles, miles wide, some of them like hundreds of miles wide and stuff, you know. And um, and then the other vision was another one where the human race wasn't free, and it was like a hive collective uh, locked down into a mainframe and completely controlled. And if you unplugged one of the uh, beings from the Matrix, you know, it would uh, get severely, you know, afraid because it's not used to being alone in its own mind anymore. You know, that's how subjugated the human race could do, you know, could be. And the human race was divided right. into two, like, different species at that time, you know, from this vision. And, um, you know, the vision was just so you know, horrific and tyrannical that I just decided that, you know, straight away I knew what I had to do, you know, I had to create the timeline, you know, to be able to exist in the future, now, do you know what I mean, you've got to plant a seed, and, uh, you know, for anything to exist, it has to be open to the possibility of its own existence, mm -hmm. so what you can do is you can take these timelines that you want from the future and plant them in the now and live them in the now and then you can actually create them in the future do you know what I mean so you're right. always creating and stuff so Raising Eden basically is about Raising Eden within the individual you know so uh, they're becoming in a relationship with the higher self they're becoming more potent powerful and stronger and certain in themselves and it gives you like um, the practices and daily practices that you can do to do that and to really forge a relationship with your higher self so like you said with the prepping stuff you wanted practical stuff and the same here i didn't want this stuff to be um, like fairy tales and fantasy and mystical i wanted it to be based in fact and you know reality i wanted something practical and direct that people could actually use every day you know from that moment forward so not only does it actually cover you know the spiritual aspects 
you know, that people can use and become a really potent, powerful force and awaken them, you know, and waken them up into their own power, it actually activates the DNA at the same time and fires it up. Because the, the, uh, the reason why it's in the, the form that it is, uh, the simple uh, quotes and stuff, is because it, um, you know, the wisdom itself is imbued with so much potency that, you know, it activates the DNA and uh, it just wakes people up. And, uh, well, you know, the, the quote itself, the quotes are all that people need, really, to, uh, to look into. And then they'll just, uh, they'll have so many different ideas and so many layers to just each quote. It's, you know, it's like an onion, basically, where you can just read one of them for the day and, you know, that could be enough. It's like you said, you can skip to anywhere in the book and read it like uh, in Bibliomancy, basically, like Magenta Pixie was saying as well, which mm -hmm. a lot of people do, like a daily practice thing. Or you can just, like, read it from the start to the end as well it just like flows all covering every subject and the first book was basically establishing the context the context of everything so it goes into a lot of like love and creation and infinity itself and uh, the electromagnetic fractal holograph in you know in which we're actually living in with now and stuff so it sets the context whereas the second book is more on the actual um, divine practical knowledge and the application of all of it as well you know, but within the two books, and I've just actually finished the third book two days ago, finished writing oh, nice. it. So nice. it's actually, I've actually created a trilogy that, you know, that's what I received. It became a trilogy. So um, I was just in the editing process for the third one and stuff. But all in all, together, it's, you know, amongst the most powerful work that's out there for everything in one place. And, it, you know, it's very practical and direct, therefore, even beyond the earth that wouldn't be able to use it and become more powerful unto themselves, you know, and more certain, you know, stronger. So, ultimately, it's um, just about raising Eden within the individual, and then individually, on a yeah, individual uh, level, and then collectively uh, raising it together. And in the future, you know, depending on how many people, you know, come to it and learn about it, it's raising Eden within the world collectively as a human race as well. So, that's ultimately the goal to establish in the future, spiritual communities, you know, self-sufficient all over the world, you know, with spiritually empowered uh, people that are connected to the higher self and have that daily practice and awareness. So, that's about it. <laughs> like that. Now, now your third book, can you give us any insight about what that's about or should we wait because that hasn't hit the market yet? What do you want to do with that? Yeah, I can give some insight. I mean, it's like, it's one flowing long uh, work, you know, it's not like divided, like you says, in, into many, many different books. It kind of, my work's like a spiral, a fluid spiral that's constantly getting bigger and bigger and larger and larger, and it all fits into one itself, you know, into each other. And it just like, because that's what all the forces in the universe are, they're all curving, you know, back to the original source from whence they manifested, you know. It's like going down a plug hole. And, uh you know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm actually doing painting at the moment and stuff, so I'm actually using the forces of the universe to actually create paintings. Oh. I'm actually, uh, I've got like this special technique I do where um, I kind of like tie like a rope to the roof and put the paintbrush on it, and I just uh, let the, uh, I, let, I let the forces do their own like curvature, and it, it creates a map, like a stargate on the page, you know, maps it all out basically, but that's just one of the, like, the funny things I do, you know, in my spare time and stuff. But um, yeah, like some of the, um, the next book, um, it, it just basically, you know, like it says, is, uh, you know, there's not a soul on earth who can't gain loads of strength and power and, you know, an insight and certainty and love, you know, from what's actually inside all the Ways and Eden books and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, raising them up and, it, it, you know, it's going to make their own inner true voice, you know, a hell of a lot stronger than stuff, you know, so they can um, go into the world and, you know, deal with everything that's going on and stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the third book, it's a long time coming because... You know, this stuff, I started the concept, you know, the original vision was received uh, 10 years ago, so it's 10 years work now, and, uh, you know, it's only really, like, you know, today, in the last few weeks, I've actually started, you know, stepping forward properly and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like the second book, one of the most important things about the second book, I suppose, is um, to empower people, you know, on the physical level, the mental uh, environment level, the emotional level, and the spiritual realm as well, you know. And, you know, they have their own names for all of them in the, in the third book, you know. I won't go into the names and stuff that I've called stuff. But it's yeah. also also creating the, um, you know, like I said, practical direct knowledge, creating the four foundational um, spheres of life, you know. And uh, the existence, you know, of anybody is comprised into four different spheres, which are the health, you know, health of the body and looking after mm -hmm. yourself, and not just on a health level, but also on all the uh, levels, like the mental and emotional and spiritual as well, you know. Then there's the work, 
the work um, sphere, which is uh, you know not just your worldly work where you um, sustain yourself in the world and working to you know get money. Um, you know, to pay for your house and your rent and to feed yourself and stuff, but also your spiritual work. You know, there has to be a balance between your worldly work and your spiritual work. And then there's the, um, you know, the sphere of relationship, which is, you know, God is the total sum of all relationship. So everything is, like I was speaking about context as earlier, context is of the world, and everyone's stuck in the context of money. So there's always competition, therefore there's always them... Um, that self-destructiveness, two forces opposed to one another because the consciousness, the environment in which it's in, the consciousness is split into two different fractured states from the get-go. So in order to have a, a peaceful world, it can't be done with money, sadly. I know people say money is a tool. Yes, yeah. it is a tool. But ultimately, the fracture has already started by actually having the idea of money in the first place, if you know what I mean. There has to be something that's created that's more holographic in nature, that's more fluid. And, um, you know, that, that's a way to solve that problem, you know, towards the future anyway. I'll go more into depth in that anyway, but there's, you know, a lot of that in the books and stuff anyway. But, um, you know, the last pillar ultimately is the spirituality pillar as well. So you've got the health pillar, the work pillar, the relationship pillar, and the spirituality pillar. And the spirituality, uh, spirituality pillar on itself, you know, covers the context of everything as well. Because spirituality just means basically, you know, what's outside of space and time as well. It's a full... Um, you know, the full beingness of absolutely everything, and that's what spirituality is. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that spirituality, you know, people are spiritual beings, you know, and uh, we're speaking about contexts again, you know, because contexts are very important when it comes to consciousness and creating an environment for growth and for learning as well. So, you know, come from the perspective that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, because then you place yourself within a context of something that's far grander, you know, far more greater than what you are, which means that you yourself have a, f you know, you planted the seeds for your own awakening and enlightenment, basically, because you create a context to grow, you know, infinitely, you know, forever, basically. Right. So, you know, it's very important that people understand that. You know, everybody's spiritual. You know, some have forgot, some uh, haven't. That's the only difference. Right, and I think a lot of it is uh, because uh, uh, you know, people are in different aspects of their life, but, uh, you know, so sometimes people are just focusing on the mundane because that's what they get caught up in, like you were talking about. The whole the whole thing has to do with it, you know, and, and I didn't realize while uh, writing the books that I wrote, I didn't realize that all of this was going to come back around. It was all going to be uh, encompassed into one thing. Now I'm glad that it was, uh, but I didn't know that consciously. Obviously, subconsciously, I must have because I was focusing myself and I kept pointing myself in a closer and closer and environment, you know, going to that bottleneck to where I am now, to where I've realized all of that actually came together. And <clears throat> you're, you're talking exactly uh, like that with, with the, you know, you already, you already got that. You've been working on it for 10 years. And isn't it weird that I've been working on it for 10 years? It's that 2008 time period that... Uh, yeah, the, the awakening you know, wave. Right, that, that I think, and that's when it hit me as well, just like when it hit you, and that's bizarre. And then we started coming uh, forward, and I know other people that I've talked to that have had the same thing, where 2008 was sort of a, a place where they made uh, life changes, and here they are now. So it's really, it's really weird. We, we can get into that maybe at some point um, and talk to people and figure that out, you know. But, but I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, uh, good. I agree with you 100%, and I, and I wanted to reiterate for the people what you were talking about with the, with the, with the whole money issue. You know, the environment is created there that, that unfortunately puts us in a adversarial position with, you know, the, the poor and the middle class and the rich, or, or in most cases just the poor and the rich. And, um, and then we start acting like they do because we're trying to get that corporate ladder, you know, where you're stabbing the, you know, you're stabbing the guy in the back and, and there was a, a comedian who had a knife that had a double edge and he said that's the corporate ladder knife so you can stab the guy who's about to try and stab you in the back while you're trying to stab another guy in the back, right? <laughs> so you can stick him and stick him and get up the ladder, you know? And that's horrible that we laugh at that, but it's true because that's the environment that has been created, like you were talking about, that we're stuck in. And the real utopia, the real Eden is with in us, and the only way that we're going to be able to, to make that happen and, and disclosure won't happen until we do it, you, me, and everybody else that's, that is going to be spiritual enough to uh, create this reality for us, and um, you were talking about that as well, with creating the, re the reality of the future, we, and, the, and we have to have the intent in ourselves to do that, and I just wanted to reiterate that really quickly without taking up too much of your time, because this is about you, not me, but I wanted to show the people how, if you 
look at the interviews that we've had in the past, how often the interviews in the past, even though these people have many different uh, topics that they're talking about or that they're, you, you think their background is, that we have psychics on here, we have mediums on here, spiritual people on here, people that go out, like Brian yesterday, who go out and look at ruins, yet we're all saying the same things. Isn't that bizarre how uh, different genres are all coming back to one another? So, um, so yeah, I didn't want to uh, take that away from what you were saying because um, I agree with you 100% in, in uh, what you're saying. And I and I and I love the idea of your books because the the it's just I could never write that many uh, quotes or come up with them and so you you said really quickly and then you passed over it and I wanted to go back to that tell us about that now you, you're saying that you that you received this information uh, of everything that you were doing so so you channeled that information was are you did you channel that from uh, your higher self or do you think it was uh, another uh, entity above that was it your uh, spirit guides where did you get that information from all of the information um, came from basically it's a simple way of putting it is um, great works are the product of great relationship Therefore, you know, all of the information came from me having a great relationship with my higher self, basically, you know, and bringing that to the forefront, you know, and embodying it within my human form. But I also had another spiritual experience, you know, a long time ago, where, um, you know, um, I actually experienced the embodiment of my higher self for a few seconds, you know, and then I was back in my body again. And that kind of experience, even for a few seconds, gives you the passion for a lifetime because it's giving you something that's outside of what was known to you in this form, if you know what I mean. So then I realized, you know, you know, that was me all along, if you know what I mean. So the human part of me is just playing its uh, little game or whatever. And then um, the, the funniest thing was um, I started looking at, uh, I chose a certain symbol, you know, for my YouTube channel and stuff. Then I looked in the, um, over the years, the symbol that I actually chosen was actually, you know, I found it to be carved all over the Egyptian walls and stuff, and I actually understood what it actually meant. It's like the big sun with all the little suns handing them babies and children below it and stuff. That, that, that's a symbol of the higher self in the individual and fragmenting into many different parts, you know, into this domain. So somebody in ancient Egypt or in the past, it, it wasn't even the Egyptians that built the pyramids anyway or any of that stuff. They were created a lot, lot um, longer ago than that. There's actually been artifacts that have been discovered, um, you know, uh, I can't remember which country it is now, it's um, Eastern Europe somewhere, anyway, I can't remember the exact country, uh, but um, they've actually dated all of these things they've found back to like 11,000 years ago, you know, now, all of the Isis and all of the Egyptian, like, gods and deities and stuff, they've, they've actually got carbon dating on them that tracks them back to 11,000 years ago or more, if you know what I mean, which puts the dates back even further. But there is, like, star maps etched inside the pyramids that tell you when they were built as well anyway, and when they were, like, aligned with the stars. That's also on my page as well. But there's also, uh, you know, there's not just uh, that kind of stuff. It's like all of the pyramidical structures on the Earth and everything, they're all aligned with the stars above, you know. Uh, so microcosmic, you know, they create a macrocosmic stellar spin, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like you said, um, all of this work that everybody's doing, it's all um, little um, fragments of the same thing, because Dan's winter work goes into stargates and the fractality of things and stuff, and even me doing these books and putting all these words into these books in the most simple form, you know, that I could, because it would, if uh, I, I could go into any uh, subject, any quote, and create an entire book on it if I wanted to, but that's right. why I, I've had to compress them so much, you know, it, it's basically just, you know, this is the only form that I could possibly put it in to get all of the information out there and all of the, you know, imbued consciousness and stuff, you know, so it's right. absolutely amazing. I agree it is it's made it's amazing completely and and like my my third book which is which what you were talking about with the with the pyramids and my third book is called orion rising and uh, on the cover yeah. of the book has has the pyramids and uh, the constellation of orion right above it uh directly above it correlating with the pyramids itself and i did that on purpose i made that whole uh cover myself to show uh, you know, there's a theory that when the pyramids were built, at the time they were built, uh, in the constellation of Orion was, in fact, directly above. Uh, yeah, the yeah. So, so when they built the pyramids, uh, they correlated with the Orion's belt and the, the constellation of Orion. So, uh, so in that book that I, that I wrote, which is going to be a trilogy, I have two two other books. One I'm writing, the second book I'm writing now. Third book I've already got, you know, in my head. I just don't have it all down yet, and I will. I'll get that stuff out every couple of years. I'll get a book out, and we'll we'll get that going too. But that's this. It, it, it plays into what exactly what you're saying, where 
Um, if you look at things now, we're starting to realize that we're much older as a, as a race. Uh, scientists are starting to see that um, our DNA um, doesn't come from here, <clears throat> that we came from someplace else. Now, now that poses the question oh, of all the theories, you know, where did we come from? And, and then there's all those theories about where we came from and how we got here. And we don't know the answers to that yet. And I don't know the answers to that yet. I just know that we're not from here, that we're from somewhere else. And then we came here, at least that's what I believe now, because of everything that I'm seeing, that we're just from here. And then we've been in there, or if we have been here, we've been here for a great, a lot longer than we think we have. It's like you were saying, <clears throat> in at least 10,000 years. But now um, there's that group where it's 10,000 years, but then there's also the possibility of us being in here even longer, but also looking at that we terraformed the place. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to figure that stuff out as time goes. And I think a lot of that has to do with work that you're doing because your your uh, work is helping people to be empowered and to uh, spiritually grow. And I think that, that, like you just said, like you mentioned a couple minutes ago, we as a human race, we as the people on this planet need to, uh, and this is what we're about here at Watcher Stock, we've been working towards this, <clears throat> and the people that we associate with, the people that we talk to, pardon me, I'm having problems. <clears throat> I think it's because they're cutting the grass there and I'm having uh, allergy <laughs> Grass. Anyway, oh, no. Yeah, right. I'm getting phlegm. Sorry about that. So, so uh, what what I believe is that is that uh, that we as a people have to uh, um, become more conscious and more spiritually aware, and and because we're getting to a point where we need to vibrate at a different at a different level. Uh, like uh, Omar was saying earlier when we were talking about the vibration level of of the of the planet now and the human race, and then what the frequency is it the wrong frequency? It used to not be here at this frequency, and this frequency is making us a little more violent. And I think that guys like you who are doing this work uh, and bringing this to the forefront uh, is going to help us all. Uh, uh, change that vibration and get us back to a place where we can be more peaceful uh, and grow uh, as a race instead of compete so much. And like you just said uh, about a, a time when there isn't any money and we have a utopian in Eden uh, where we have uh, self-sufficient people who are uh, in villages or in, in, in cities or in states that uh, work without money. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that the people understood how you were going with that. Um, do you, you, you honestly believe that Am I right that that we should um, uh, be working towards that 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 point? Well, we need to um, first of all, the most important thing, like, is learn the spiritual uh, aspects of things, and you know, and having um, you know, basically, we find all the negative traits out of your being, and we, uh, you know, and uh, you know, try and embody all of the positive traits within your uh, being as well. And one of the things about truth is, you know, it, it's not you're not seeking truth, you know, you don't seek truth. You know, truth is something that you live, and um, you know, in order to embody the truth, people are going to, you know, they're going to absolutely have to drastically change the way they live, you know, and be conscious on absolutely everything they do. Look into every single little detail, even make a checklist, you know, one by one that they can tick up on, you know, like their diet, their health, and uh, you know what they're eating and stuff, what they're even, um, you know, what the minds are like um, looking into, because there's so much information there now within this world, and uh, the, you know, the, the, it's easy to get over, you know, saturated with information as well. And you know, evil likes to be studied, so make sure that if you are studying dark matter and dark subjects, you have a balance to what you're doing with an equal and opposite, uh, good positive energy as well at the same time, because otherwise it will try to claim you that's what energy does you know it tries to claim you so if you embody uh, you know the positive aspects you know of truth compassion kindness you know they will become stronger within the world anyway you know and if you can if you can do that then not only does it protect you from the darkness but it also it's like building like your own inner armor your spiritual armor your own spiritual you know um, you know armor that you know the darkness can't penetrate you know because all of this stuff that we're talking about now can only exist within an environment of of um, you know like you say a lower frequency or a lower dimensional band you know of mm -hmm. uh, light so if you can create and cultivate an environment of high light in yourself individually then we can construct one together um, uh, you know together consciously and collectively you know then you can go from there and a lot of people, you know, they get these ideas and they try and, you know, let the mind, create, you know, solve the greater problems. But the the uh, the human mind is made, you know, the ego uh, body human mind is made to do the day to day tasks from day to day. You know, the small, um, um, you know, um, problems and create solutions to them and stuff. But on, you know, if you need, if you want to live a greater life, you have to basically uh, connect with the greater mind. 
with inside yourself because the greater mind is what can deal with the great problems and that's what we need here so collectively if we want to get to where we're going we have to magnetize naturally those people around us that are supposed to be with us working with us it's not a mind thing where you think oh i'm going to work with this person i'm going to work with this person it's more of a heart thing where you naturally get magnetized to certain people and you recognize these people from their energy as they come into your life and you think oh yeah i can do this with that person and we can do that and together if we do it and we work together like what we're doing now we can create this powerful you know tool for awakening basically so you know it's that kind of thing <laughs> I, I, no, I agree with that 100 percent you're you're absolutely right and the only way that any of that is going to happen is that is that guys like you and i and and, and you know everybody here who watches what we do here and all of the people that we're associating with and working with we all have to work together to, to get it done because you and i both know that the powers that be don't want us doing any of this they want us to be slaves and just do what we're told to do and just continue working and doing what we're doing to make their pockets fatter and you know and that way they can wear bigger wigs, as it were, you know, and 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 uh, or the bigger hats now that you know that they do with the Pope, and you know, so we you know we do know that. Now I have a question from uh, from the audience here. We have uh, Sherry Putnam says she's uh, she also is a uh, uh, works with us at Watchers Talk, but she's watching and she's asking a question. What is the point uh, in duality, and how do you conquer it? <laughs> well, you can see um, creation as a learning environment you know, something that we're descending into to learn, to get back to. And, uh, you know, that's a very, very good question as well, because there's the whole, um, you know, Garden of Eden thing in the beginning and stuff right. about, you know, why would um, people need to get out of here? But I think the context is basically something like, um, you know, uh, it goes into a lot of Dan Winter's work as well about um, if we were like, think of uh, the film, The Avatar, when the Navi are there and stuff, uh, the Navi... Uh, were very, very powerful and very in harmony and uh, symbiotic relationship with the Earth, you know, and with their planet, you know, uh, I think it's called Pandora or something. Yeah, something close yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. And um, the Navi, they were uh, having a symbiotic relationship with the world and stuff, but then these dark forces came in, you know, from somewhere else, from uh, the greater darkness, as you could call it. You know, just the same as what's happened here in this world today and stuff. You know, these forces come in and stuff, and they start knocking the balance and create, trying to create a different context, you know, and subjugate the, uh, the population and stuff and expose them to all these kind of things. But um, basically, uh, you know, the dualistic thing... Um, you know, when you come face to face with something that dark and that uh, powerful, you know, I, I call it the uh, the predator consciousness of the abyss, basically, because right. it's this uh, predator consciousness that comes in and just like, uh, you know, preys on people and right. um, just takes over them. And, well, I mean, one of the big things that people need to understand is God the Creator is one. Everything is one with God, basically. So God doesn't, uh, you know, although he allows free will... He doesn't uh, create uh, an a toxic environment himself. He's created a pure environment of harmony. And uh, the only way these beings can um, create the environment to be able to do the things that they do is by not only infecting the creation itself by going into it, but also by, um, you know, um, corrupting all of the creations inside the creation as well, you know. So if you speak to an obviously you're going to get influenced, you know, because in a uh, um, you know, the the power in a being is concentration. The more concentrated being in the energy, the more powerful and the more influence they'll exert on the beings and the people around them and the uh, environment as well. So, basically, the, the weaker minds are always subservient to the stronger minds. You know, so that's one of the reasons why people need to get stronger in themselves and stuff and everything. But, but uh, in order to uh, go to where the human race was initially, you know, in Eden, you know, when it first started, is to have to be able to not only face fully all of this darkness within the world and everything that's happening and face the darkness in ourselves first we've got to face that and we've got to try to organize amongst ourselves you know together to, you know to organize because up until now the criminals are the ones who got organized you know the good people didn't really have to as much you know, <coughs> because the criminals were trying to do something so now we just need to make sure we're trying to do something. The good in the world are getting organized as well, together, you know what I mean? And that's what's happening now. With uh, That's why we're doing this kind of thing. That's why you wrote your books. That's why I've done my books. That's why Brian Forster was on yesterday. All these little fragments doing their own little things, all coming together to accumulate in this massive shift in consciousness that's happening. And the difference between now and the ancient world is that 
all these people uh, that, are, that are aware and awake today, you know, they're looking for direction. And there's a lot more people now, you know, that are aware of everything that's going on, you know, far more than there's ever been before. So the shifts, obviously, are a lot more faster, you know, which, like you were saying earlier, increases the uh, resonance of the Earth because it's all linked, you know. All of right. us are linked into the Earth, you know. <coughs> and, uh, it, you know, including, like, where all the land is now, for example, is a direct reflection of our resonance, you know. If we were vibrating differently, certain lands would sink, you know, and certain other lands would rise up. You know, just like what happened in the past with, um, you know, ancient Atlantis and some of the lost right. civilizations and stuff. But um, basically, um, you know, because the Navi, as I was saying earlier, weren't um, used to this kind of darkness coming in because they'd never experienced anything like it before. You know, the um, it's kind of like the human race. You know, they don't know what's going on or why it is the way it is and what's happening. You know, because obviously there's forces and great forces within the world that are in the world greater than some of the forces who can oppose them because, you know, to get stronger in yourself, that's what I always come back to, you know, the individual thing to become stronger in yourself, you know, individually and then collectively organized together as a force for good, you know, from this point onwards and stuff. And, uh, you know, like, uh, Dan Winter goes into, like, this um, thing where he says, like, um, the DNA... You know, we need to basically create antibodies against the darkness that we didn't have before because we never faced anything like it. So, you know, you could say that everything like the earth is like a cell and we're learning to fight a disease, a, you know, a disease that's come into the earth and it's coming from somewhere else. And we're learning the antibodies to be able to defeat it, you know, and, uh, and once we've managed to be able to defeat this darkness on this level, then we'll be able to obviously go back out into the stars and create the the glorious galactic civilization that we once had in this uh, in the distant past. Because right now, today, you know, we're living within the ruins of what we once were. So that's kind of my um, you know some of my thoughts and you know, perspective on the kind of things you know. So, but I, you know, I agree with that 100 percent because it, it, you know, literally, we had this this society here at one one time and who knows how long we've been here there's some suggestion you know, we were we were trying to talk about that uh, uh, Omar and myself and I we were talking to Brian about that that you know if we had lived on Mars and we lived here on, on, on Earth at the same time. That had to have been millions of years ago. And, and even if you come away from that and say, let's, let's forget about that and look at the time period of Atlantis and, and what was going on then and the, all the theories that we hear and the stories of the technology and the, and the way of life at that time on this planet, even if you don't say uh, we were grander than that and just say that we were here all as Atlantis, uh, then that was in and of itself a very, very, it was a utopian society that was worldwide, and it, it, was, it was more technology than we have now, better technology than we have now, a lot more peace than we have now, so even better than we are now. So even if you just look back and say that was 10,000 years ago, we were at one time in a grandiose uh, uh, scale, a human race with, with a, a lot more running for us than we are now. And <clears throat> we are trying to get back to that. I agree with you. Hold on. <clears throat> so let me ask you this. For those people who um, say, you and, you and I are, are, are farther down the path, obviously, than, than most people. We've already had our start. For most people, say, that are just trying to uh, figure that out and they're, and they're just tuning in, say, to or finding you and, or me or, or all the stuff that's going on, and they're saying, what can, how can I help? How can I do this for myself? What do I need to do to start? To give give those people your perspective of what they need to do uh, for themselves to start being more spiritual. Well, basically, they just um, need to make sure that um, you know they put themselves. You know, they you know they have like um, you know a want. You know, that inner desire to want to know more and you know just be open to everything as well. You know, and uh, I mean even before I even started on YouTube, you know, it, um, I spent two years like a sponge just on YouTube, um, just soaking up videos, soaking up information, you know, I hadn't even started, I need to build a context, you know, a powerful context, like I said earlier, an environment of learning for myself, inside myself, because, you know, it's, um, although you can't see it physically, it is, uh, you're creating um, domains inside yourself, like on an emotional level, on a, a mental level, you know, as well, and on a spiritual level inside yourself, so, you know, it's like having a field, 
that you need to fill up with, uh, you know, good seeds and good plants and stuff. So, you know, I just say um, soak up as many videos as you, as you can on all of the different subjects and just um, follow your heart and basically don't resist your heart on what it's saying with uh, your mind in any way, you know. And then if you keep doing that, you will be on the right path anyway. It doesn't matter how powerful you are or where you are on your journey. There's no way to measure where a person is on the journey anyway, to be honest with you. Right. Apart from, you know, when you get really powerful and potent, you can start sensing energy, if you know what I mean, a lot more. But, you know, their gifts and abilities that come, you know, far later on. But basically, everybody has that inbuilt ability anyway of uh, you know, self and the soul anyway because everyone you know is a soul you know they don't have a soul they are a soul you know that's basically what we are so you know like you just change context of everything but make sure you're building context of learning for yourself and just make sure that you've got that um, desire to want to know and don't be afraid to message people like message me message you talk to people you know. just um, you know move forward with if you've got you know, just do just both, or just message uh, who you're interested in and stuff. You know, and most of the time, you're you're you you know they'll like uh, you doing it. You know, they'll want you to um, message them because that's their life. You know, they spent a lot of time and energy, you know, getting to where they've got to, and it is who they are. You know, so um, right. you know, you, you, yeah, just have an open mind and just um, you know be yourself and just like don't hold back with your heart. <laughs> Right, and you know, <clears throat> I think that we're lucky to live in a time period that we that we are in now because uh, of how, how how bad things have gotten, and now we've gotten to a point where we do have the internet, we do have this this media that uh, you know smartphones and and uh, computers that we literally have the entire world's knowledge. At, at our fingertips, so and it's not like before we had to go to the library and hope that you could find a book, and then you had to be subjected to the librarian or the company who owns the library's ideology of what they want to put in their library, uh, you know, and keep certain books away from you to read. Now, even if they're banned, because here in America there's a lot of books that are banned and you can't get the books here, you can go online and you can still get those books and read them. But you couldn't do that before because they wouldn't allow you to buy them inside the United States because they didn't like what they had to say. See, so they would ban them. Well, now that information is out there, and we can get it out there. And so, just like just like uh, Daniel said here for you guys, um, YouTube. I, I tell people that when I was uh, making videos on YouTube, YouTube's your best friend. Uh, you can find anything that you want on there. Not just that, but just the internet itself. You know, the different search engines around the world that that uh, you can go to Google and all those other search engines. You can find anything that you want, anything that you're interested. And, and I agree with you, what you just said. Um, for, for those people going, um, a lot of people are afraid to question. A lot of uh, people are afraid to ask questions. I've noticed that they're even doing this show. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have thousands of people tuning into the show, and they'll be talking, they may talk to each other, but they don't ask questions directly as much. And sometimes I think they're afraid to uh, step up and ask the question, and it's kind of weird. And I, and I wish that more people would uh, engage more and ask questions and, and not be so shy, because uh, we know they're there. <laughs> we know that there's people watching us and listening to us right now and not as not very many of them are asking questions um and they but they want to hear what's what's being said and for those people who are afraid to ask questions that's okay too eventually you'll get to that point just like uh, daniel said you just have to look into yourself and, and start looking at youtube and listen to guys like me listen to guys like him and question everything don't be afraid to look at many things you should like he said open your mind have your mind open open your mind and uh, don't be afraid to to ask questions and and just run with that i mean um but otherwise where, where are we going to go how are we going to get to a rat and it's kind of like the secret you know how they had that secret uh that they had that uh, and it's kind of like that where uh, getting back to getting the negative energy out of your brain and out of your psyche and, and getting positive energy and like he was saying you have to reinforce that because we're uh, like a cell that's trying to uh, defeat uh, an evil, uh, a disease that we never had to incorporate before. And I really like the way you put that. That was really, that was really, that's why I wanted to go back to that and mention that again, just uh, just because uh, that was really cool that you that you did that. Now, um, uh, where do you think? Let's let's talk about that. Where would you, where do you think we came from as a race? Do you think that we were created here, or do you think that we came from somewhere else? <laughs> well, that's a funny question for me because I know we came from the higher dimensions already because I've been there, you know, and I've just come down again. So right. it's kind of like I've got I've got that experience. So I remember that form, you know. Right. All I can describe it is um, inside ourselves is you know we're formed as pure beings of light, basically, you know. So it's, right. it's like exactly like Yoda says, you know, we're not this crude matter or whatever, you know, because right. Star is awesome. Right, and, uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean that—that's the truth. The human race did descend from the higher dimensions 
into the lower dimensions where we are now. And, uh, you know, everything's obviously vibrating on... Uh, it's, it's like we're all trying to get back to the source again. But, you know, why we're here, you know, you've got to enjoy the ride. You've got to enjoy, you know, every single moment because it's about being present. It's about becoming stronger. And like I said, building that armor, that spiritual armor, you know, inside yourself, you know, on all your levels of your, you know, domains, which is, you know, your physical, your mental, your spiritual, and your emotional and everything, you know. And you've got to protect yourself in all of them areas and be able to um, identify which ones that, like, don't allow your, you know, you know, your thoughts and your emotions don't allow them to direct you all your life. Make sure that you've got power to direct them onto things as well and stuff, you know. And it's the same with energy, of your energies and stuff, because, you know, the, uh, it's like uh, like um, your, your host, that woman that you was on about, she was on about the, um, you know, the polarity of the universe and stuff. And, uh, you know, I mean, the polarity of the universe, like it says, in God's creation, there was just uh, benevolence, there was love. You know, God itself created all form from itself. It created a magnetic field that splits energy off, you know, and it creates a veil. It's like, I'm different from you, you know, you're different from me. We're seeing different entities on this level. Uh, you know, your computer, my computer, or, you know, the curtains in your room or whatever, we're seeing these different objects and stuff. But uh, God, you know, that's the illusion of the creator and this oneness. It uh, created and splintered and split off a parts of itself through love itself to create all form and dimension and to allow existence to exist and that's why we can actually have dimensions in the creation because of the love of God the creator you know the one creator and you know the negative energies you know they're very destructive and grounding and constrictive in nature but the positive energies are very creative and uplifting and expansive in nature and you know people need to learn about energies and you know the, um, the attributes as well because we're within a universe of um, energies you know within a universe of information you know and people need to learn that you know negative energies for example they're unstable in the manifestation whereas the positive energies are stable in the manifestation so you know you need to use both of them ruled wisely by the heart and not the mind basically you know so the destructive tendencies you know in the human individual you know basically comes from lack of self-love you know, and also a cumulative effect by being within the context as well of, you know, like I said earlier, the fractured state of consciousness like money, you know, that context, a, a toxic um, context basically from the get-go, you know. Right. So people, people need to go beyond all of that, you know. So it, like I was saying earlier with the emotional thing and not allowing your thoughts and emotions to direct you, it's the same with the negative energies, you know, don't allow them to direct you, you know, instead, you know, direct them. You know, because otherwise they'll end up destroying you, you know. And like I said, it all stems from love and, you know, lack of self-love. And that's just on an individual basis. It's also on a collective level as well. So, Right, and, you know, I've talked about that uh, for a lot of my life. Somehow I, I figured that out when I was, I don't know, early on, 15 years old or so, and I tried to, to explain. I've never written a book about it. Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe that's what my problem is. <clears throat> but I try to explain to people that uh, your energy, my energy, all of our individual energies, first of all, we need to take, uh, um, we need to take control of that. We need to take, take control of that and be aware of it because uh, as we interact with each other as individuals, even as strangers uh, on this planet, when you interact with them when you're out in public or you're uh, online somewhere waiting to buy something or pay for something or you're in traffic and, and you know, somebody cuts you off and you raise the fifth fist at them because they, they made you mad because they cut you off, you have to understand that the reason that you got mad was not because they made you mad because uh, because the, the only person who can make you mad is yourself if someone says a word to you or words to you and it, and it makes you angry it's because you put strength and energy and power into the words they said and and you know that they're trying to make you mad and you accepted that and then you turn that back on them and that just creates a, an issue where you just get more and more adversarial whereas if you're if you're the other way around and you can take control of that and I know that goes back to the whole spirituality and you hear Jesus saying turn the other cheek but you don't really need to turn the other cheek you just need to take control of the situation and be aware of yeah. how you're how you're projecting energy to other people and what your intent is if you intend to be a peaceful person you can be without turning the other cheek and being a victim when somebody is is being mean to you you can do both you look at the Dalai Lama and look at you know look at things in history where you see people doing just that and I think um, that you know Daniel was touching on that and I think that um, that I've been trying to tell people that my whole life we need to be more aware of what 
somebody does to us and then just go, was it that important? He cut me off. Okay, whatever. Watch that guy because someone just like him uh, down the road here in a half mile is going to cut him off right back. And you can go see now there's karma. There's, there's, it's, it's, it's apropos. So don't worry about that stuff and, 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 and take care of yourself and be nice to other people because that's what you'll get back from them. And eventually that propagates everybody being nice. I once proved that while I was on a train and I, and I, and I told my son at the time, I said, I said, look around. I said, uh, it used to be a time when a woman would walk into a train and men considered themselves gentlemen and they would stand up and let the woman sit down and take the place. But in these modern days, no one does that anymore. They're too self-centered and self selfish. However, it's contagious. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, watch the next person who came on board, who was uh, either elderly or a woman. I said, I stood up and said, here, please sit here. Oh no, no, please sit here. You're, you, you deserve the seat more than I do. I can stand. And at the very next stop, when someone else came on who was a woman or was an elderly person, the very men who didn't get up before that three stops earlier started getting up and giving their seats to other people. So it takes one little thing, and this is what Daniel's talking about, guys. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm trying to help you guys understand. That's what my job is as the host, to help you understand what my uh, uh, interviewees are uh, talking about, is that um, we individually, one little thing that we do can contribute to a snowball effect that changes a lot of things and I believe that and that's why I'm here now talking to Daniel and that's why he's here now talking to me because he believes that as well and that all of us together collectively are going to be able to change things and you have to understand that that enough of us think it it will happen and enough of us want this whole world to be a better place it will it will happen am I wrong in that Daniel what you're thinking on that no, you're absolutely right, you know, and uh, that was the purpose of raising it in the first place, you know, or any of the experience that I've had, you know, even the spiritual ones, it's to use that knowledge right now in the world for the people, you know, and to bring that about, and, you know, like, all the energies, as you were saying, you know, because uh, we live within a conscious living universe, you know, never forget that, you know, the uh, consciousness is what births everything, you know, and energy is just the movement of consciousness, you know, within the universe, so all the energies, you know, such as truth and love, you know, they're all conscious living energies that, you know, over time can get stronger in you if you embody them and stuff, you know, because over time you can become binded, you know, in love, you can become binded in truth, and you become binded with your destiny, you know, if you can, um, you know, put all them into your body, and, uh, you know, the powers of the negative and the positive, you know, they're yours to command at any time, you know, the powers of destruction or creation, you know, the powers of the mind or of the heart, you know, and all you need to do is basically, like it says on the title of my second book, which is Raise and Eden, um, you know, and the Singular Truth, basically. Mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. You need to connect with the, uh, the singular living truth within inside yourself, and it will create your restraint, it will create your stability, and you'll be able to use all your powers, you know, wisely for, you know, the good of all life, basically. And, uh, you know, one of the good things about all of this, and I know we're in a world that's... Um, you know, uh, the context is like, uh, kind of like poisonous, you know, to a large extent in many ways, you know, you have the, um, you know, the ability to not engage with that paradigm as little or as much as you want, you know, you, you can be doing your own thing, you know, don't worry about what other people are doing, you know, worry about what you're doing and what you're building and what you're creating, put all of your time, your focus and your energy into your, because your focal point determines your reality and it's like Einstein said as well, whatever you resonate to, that's the reality you're going to get, you know, and, uh, you know, one of the things that brings me a smile in my eyes, though, is the fact that, you know, we're all living within the, uh, the place that best, you know, that best suits us for our energy within space and time, you know, for the complete purpose that we're here to do. So it's always chosen as the place for us to manifest and have life, you know, the perfect place. And we're within the perfect place now to have a manifest life. You know, we're here with great purpose, you know, and this is what we're doing. You know, this is why we're here. Right. <clears throat> I, I agree with that, and, and we need to um, we need to learn more. I think to work together the way we did in the in the distant past. I, we we've gotten so far away from that that we've forgotten that it's so easy to do that. It's not as hard as people think it is. Some people say, "Well, that's easy for you to do." No, no, no. It is easy for you to do. <laughs> you just need to do it. All you have to do is is, is, is be aware of what's happening around you. Be aware that there's negative around you, and and defend against that. And how do you defend against that? Well. One way is is just like we talked about. One way is you ignore it. You you don't you don't give it the power. 
uh, it, it, it has to it has to have power, it has to get power from you, and it has to try and claim you, like he said before, where the energy will try and claim you, and the only way it can do that is that it has to gain power from you. You have to give it power. And when you give someone else power over you, you know that you give them control over you. And it's the same thing with the negative energy in the universe. If you give it power, then it, you're also giving it control because now you're responding to it and it's making you angry because that's what it wants or it's making you afraid because that's what it wants and and the more that you give into it and all you have to do is stand up to it and that's it we're more powerful as individuals than than anything else nothing can harm you because you're an immortal soul you you will live forever your energy and right now you're occupying this this uh, body and we're here because we're we're here to learn what we're here to learn so um, all we have to do at, at, at that point is just to, um, say no you know, people are always worried about being possessed by some, you know, uh, devil or something. And you know, the only way that's going to happen is that you have to ask them into you and want to do that. And, and then you have to give yourself over. And all you have to do otherwise is just go, no. Am I wrong in that? What's your no, no, you're absolutely, uh, you're absolutely right. I always say, uh, you know, detach the cords of chaos and confusion and attach the cords of love and truth. You know, and every single moment within somebody's life, you know, is a chance to build a new life and a greater life, you know. Just make sure, like I said earlier, that you're always open and you're always ready for it and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, our lives aren't really our, you know, our lives don't really belong to us anyway. They're not our own, you know. So you should basically just be present to yourself and stand in your own integrity always, you know, because it's your integrity that is the uh, is the core of who you are and all your spiritual life, you know. And if you can create a powerful, strong integrity, you know. Like I said, not only will you have an influence over all the beings of lesser integrity around you, you know, be able to influence thought within the mental environment, but you'll also, if you can look into the deeper, you'll be able to project your own self into the world and, you know, make sure that you always project uh, a position of strength into the world, you know, because then, it, um, you know, conflict doesn't find you as much either, you know, because... You know, it's like in the animal kingdom as well. You could use nature as prime example, you know, and, uh, you know, how the animal world is. Because, you know, nature itself is a reflection. Everything around us is a reflection, you know, that's there for a purpose to teach us a specific lesson. And not just people and animals and items and objects, but the actual environment itself is a learning environment. All environments are learning environments. And it goes back to, you know, why are we here within this dualistic uh, nature that we are now. One of the reasons is to refine ourselves and uh, create uh, the antibodies as well that we're going to need to face the greater darkness on the, you know, on the dimensional scale, really, on a multi-dimensional scale. We're growing in power because the journey never stops. We're always going to be constantly evolving forwards, apart from those who are on the opposite path of devolution. And there's, you know, there's evolution and devolution going on at the same time within this world. You know, not everyone's moving forwards. There's also some beings that are actually moving downwards as well, you know. That's the one big thing that people need to realize as well. You know, it's not all just uh, one way. You know, there's two ways going on here as well. And it's the same to do with time, for example, like the cause and effect thing. You know, the causes uh, and the effects, you know, they, they don't always go in a linear fashion. Sometimes the effects of something can be felt long before the cause ever manifests into physicality, you know, cause and stuff. So you've got to, like, watch well, out and stuff. So, <laughs> right, that kind right. of thing. I agree with that, and that's very important for people to understand. And we talked about that before, that intent, intent is very important. Your intent for the universe is very important. Uh, because you know, if you look at the universe, there is no real good and evil in the animal world. It just is. We, uh, I think, manifest uh, the good and the evil, the duality a little bit more than, than the rest of the universe does, even though it's there. Well, I think we, we have that right, uh, we have that choice. Whereas the rest of the, if you look at, you know, there's no evil trees. They're, you know, they're just, they're just there. There's no evil plants. They're just there. But some plants are poisonous, so you could consider that evil in some way because they would harm us. But their but their intent isn't to harm us. Uh, they're just there. We have to go over to that plant to be harmed. Um, same thing with with other animals. Their intent is not to harm us. Their intent is to survive. And uh, if if we get in their way, then we could consider that evil. But if we get in their way, they will do harm to us. Like if you go and play with a a, a mama uh, bear's cubs, she's not going to like that, and <laughs> she may end up killing you. So we have a question from. <clears throat> Sherry again. <clears throat> Pardon me. Sherry says, uh, she's asking you, uh, uh, do, do you see the past, present, and the, and the future? 
yeah yeah but it's all simultaneous to me it all it's all at the same time you know so the future that we can have you know you've got to do the work put in the work now and be that focal point you've got to be the singularity you know in the now to create the future you want and you've got to um, you know if you're strong enough and powerful enough and your influence will you know by itself cast a large influence on everybody anyway you know but you've got to be present presence is the key and the foundation stone of all spirituality you know that is the most fundamental powerful thing because that's the only thing that separates everybody you know if you look into the world at some people if they're not very present to themselves you know they don't accomplish much or anything you know or they don't get much done you know and uh, you know how can you help other people around you if you're not first present to yourself you know how can you how can you get involved and contribute to the world in need you know how can you participate how can you do anything if you're not present to yourself? So fundamentally, you know, presence is the most foundation, uh, you know, one of the foundation stones for all spirituality. And there are other stones as well that I go into, you know, there's like four that I pinpointed. But, you know, it's all within the books. I basically give a lot of um, new insights and new foundational pillars that probably have been overlooked, but they shouldn't have been, if you know what I mean. It's like I've placed them all in this book for a purpose. So people can really establish that relationship with the higher self and they can have the daily practices you know to be able to do it as well you know and that in itself just by having that i've created a context of learning you know and growth for anybody and everybody it doesn't matter how how advanced you see you are how much you think you know or you don't know it doesn't matter anybody could pick these books up these three books now this trilogy that i've just created and they can have everything they need to know about everything from galactic core cultures to DNA to Atlantis to the ancient past, you know, to the present, to the world they're in, uh, spirituality, you know, all the direct positive things they need, you know, off the grid stuff as well a little bit, you know, nature and all the energies and, uh, you know, the strengths and the weaknesses and so you know, a direct spirituality, you know, to establish that relationship. So, you know, that's basically what it was about really, making sure, you know, people have the most powerful high wisdom that, and, and the best parts of myself, you know, to be able to, um, you know, use it for their own spiritual awakening journey. Right. And you know, and that's, uh, that's like everything uh, in a nutshell. And I think that people should go and take a look at your books because that's, uh, that's a lot of information that's going to be in there that we wouldn't even be able to continue talking about here because there's just so much. If you look at his books, <clears throat> they're not thin, they're thick. There's a lot of stuff that's going on there. And, we we need to do that as a, as a people. We need to start understanding that. And um, I like what you. I want to reiterate what you pointed out, where uh, you said about how there's devolution going on as well as evolution. So, uh, you know, it, it, at that point, I think you know people. You need to you need to realize that just like you had said before that, uh, or maybe you said this when we we're off air. I'm not quite sure that um, when you uh, no, you did. You said what Einstein said, where you know if you're if you the 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 idea that you have in your mind, the energy that you put forth in the in your mind is going to what's going to end up in, in giving you the the people that surround you, because you're going to start gravitating towards that group of people. They're going to start gravitating towards you, and eventually you're going to start finding each other uh, in the in the in the world and start. To, uh, uh, gathering in larger and larger groups. Now that's good because um, the the more that we do that, the more we become aware, and the more that we become aware of of what's going on with our inner self spiritually, um, the more we're starting to figure out that. Uh, and this is what we're figuring out now that that the DNA code that we have um, is is almost like a a history book of of who we are. Am I wrong in that? Yeah, the history book contains all of the memories of every single event, uh, emotion or thought, you know, depending on where you're looking in within the DNA, you know, crystalline structure itself. You know, it can tell you all the information all the way to the the first human being that descended into these realms, you know, from high dimensions and stuff. And also all of the journey in between as well from all of the star systems that we've traveled to from that uh back you know that ancient past you know perhaps even millions or billions of years before we know you know but there seems to be different uh, bands you know like a negative bind on the polarity scale it goes back to Orion for some reason and a positive one goes to the Pleiades and a lot of the Pleiades at the moment they're not even um, they can't even have life there yet which means that we're binded to them um, our destiny lies within the Pleiades for some reason you know that's our future so it hasn't been created yet but we're still being influenced here now by the uh, the effects of a cause that isn't even caused yet you know what I mean it's the same with the Raising Eden thing that's why I bought the the cause here now you know ahead of time 
you know, for people to get involved in. And uh, it's the same with the uh, the binds of Orion as well. There's a lot of negative energies uh, that come from the Orion constellation as well that are linked to our, our past and stuff. And, you know, uh, you know, all time is simultaneous. It's all occurring all at the same time. You know, time itself is an illusion. You know, the time exists because... Obviously, we're descending into form and dimension, and in order to have form and dimension, you have to, uh, you know, have a slow down effect of the manifestations of the energy from the one, because we're all part of the one. So the one creates the magnetic field that uh, allows all form and dimension to exist, but also allows time to be birthed, and also what we perceive as gravity you know, as well to be able to exist, because it's a slowdown effect, like glue, so the manifestations don't occur all at once, you know, so we burst into time, literally. Right. So now, what do you think about, because uh, I, I brought up the DNA, and, the, and, the, and our DNA being almost like a roadmap to, like you said, to where we were uh, from. Now, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, DNA? What are your What are your thoughts on the manipulation or the possible manipulation and the theory of manipulation of our DNA by the Anunnaki? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, people need to get rid of the idea that we were authored by you know some other race or anything, and they need to come back to that. You know, because as soon as uh, like another race claims ownership of the, you know humans or whatever, or as a part of us, they they will try to claim us as their own, and you know they'll, they'll do everything they can remember to try to create a beachhead inside human consciousness, like an idea that they're entitled to be here or they're entitled to do what they do to the human race, but they're not, you know, they're not supposed to be here, you know, that's why there's such a, a violent, uh, you know, aversion to it, and that's why everybody in the world knows that something wrong is seriously, you know, happening, you know, something happening is going wrong, and, uh, you know, when it comes to DNA, DNA itself is a shimmering waveform configuration, you know, right. the uh, evolution itself, um, you know, the biggest factor in evolution is, um, is light, and the sun, basically, and the earth, because each one represents a mirror, you know, and the sun transforms energy from the higher dimensions into the lower ones, because everything's energy, you know, it transfers energy from the higher realms into the lower ones, and it's got to go through the earth as well. So, around the earth and around the sun, or like uh, fields, like the morphogenic field, and right. uh, e even one pulse of light could turn the entire human race, right now, this second, into something else, because the waveform... We're all, all a shimmering waveform of uh, configuration of DNA, because that's what DNA is. It's not a solid structure or anything. It's also spinning. It can be recoded at any time, you know, not just internally from us, because the DNA, it's read-write. It's not just, you know, right or whatever. And then you've got epigenetics, which is your source and soul is above genetics. So you can create yourself and evolve yourself into whatever you want to be. Like, we evolve into what we are going to become through the actions of what we do and all of accumulation of our thoughts and everything else. So, a lot of the things that's happening in this world is actually these beings that have come in are trying to turn us from one species into another, but do it within their own set of agenda as well, you know, instead of allowing it to uh, evolve naturally and stuff. But yeah, the biggest, fa uh, the biggest factor in um, DNA and evolution is light, you know, because it, it can, in the twinkle of an eye, turn one species into another within a single second. It's not a long process, although we see... Um, like processes in certain places in the animal kingdom and all the kingdoms on the earth and stuff, you know, from the distant past. They're just, uh, because the body in itself adapts to the environment, you will see subtle changes over time. But all these um, missing links, they're never going to find them because uh, consciousness beings do turn from one state of being into another one simultaneously, you know, mm -hmm. due to light and uh, pulsars and, you know, radiation and stuff. So. Right, right. Now, I had a question earlier, and I because uh, when Sherry asked a question, she actually asked two questions, and I forgot to ask you the second question, so they, they just put it right back in the chat here for me. <clears throat> again, I'm sorry about that, Sherry, that I didn't ask that. So she actually has two questions again, but they're both tied into the same thing. So let me ask you the question, and, and I apologize, Sherry, for uh, forgetting to ask him that question. Uh, I got caught up in what he was saying, and we just moved on. So uh, good thing she brought it back to that. So Sherry said, I'd like to ask him if he believes in the uh, Merkraba to travel, one question, and uh, do, do do you believe in uh, synthetic Merkrabas? Am I saying that word right? Well, yeah, yeah, the uh, the Merkrabas, uh, oh. you know, Merkrabas, you know, yeah. Merkrabas. Um, well, basically, 
like I said earlier, you know, the uh, humans are mostly empty space. You know, the creation is mostly empty space. So at the core of what we truly are, you know, we're formless beings of light. So if you can create a focal point in of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, it is possible to travel, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, or mentally within any of those domains if you have a, a powerful focal point. You know, it's, uh, you know, in those, doma you know, those domains and stuff, it's something I've done myself in the past because I wanted to see if it was possible, if I could. You know, I haven't done it for about 10 years because of uh, once I, you know, could, you know, you could leave the body at will, you know, Mm -hmm. basically you can um you know you don't really need to start you know messing with that because you don't know what else uh, you know could come in because you know we're dealing with a lot of forces and it's you know it's not a game you know when you're going at some of this uh you know at this high level and stuff but um yeah it, it is possible to be able to because everything is within the context of consciousness <coughs> and the creator and we're you know we're the imagination of ourselves anything is possible because we've got the whole within each single part to be able to do anything and create anything in any uh, domain you know it doesn't matter what it is so yeah it is it is possible to uh, create a macabre and go you know uh, basically you know flying around and scouting for information you know on any level so you know in that form as well in orb form so right but, yeah we have we had a psychic on here, uh, Heather Reese, she said, uh, getting to what you just said, the point that you just said, she had mentioned uh, that if you leave your body and leave it too long, she said the same thing, that uh, you could have some uh, other entity that might show up and inhabit your body if you're gone too long. Yeah, you could you could be uh, you know very very careful with uh, you know this kind of thing and stuff. It's like um, you know you got to be very careful because don't forget if everything's one, that means that you're connected to every single part of everything all of the time. Which means uh, you know basically a human being is a mirror. It's a mirror for projections of self, both good and bad. And the universe, you know, is is that as well. You know, but the human, uh, you know, the human is the X point between all omnipresent worlds and realities. You know, and what that means is that uh, you're the gateway that gives birth to all image. You know, you're the you're the gateway that gives birth to all of light and stuff. So, you know, if we're within a waveform universe of information, which is what we are, and we're receptors for information, you know, mm -hmm. information, consciousnesses, you know, could come in from anywhere on any level if they see a hole and think, oh, yeah, I know, I'll go, you know, flying down there and see what that is, you know, in there and stuff. And then you might you know, have a, an entity inside one of your domains of your mental environment or within your emotional level or within your physical level. And these aren't just like fairy tale like uh, spirituality, like, you know, like fluff or bunkum or whatever. This is, you know, you know you're emotional, you know you've got a mental environment, you know that you've got a physical environment and you know you've got a spiritual environment. You know, so don't allow, uh, don't open yourself up and allow these entities to, you know, try and take over you, you know, because that's ultimately this predator force from the abyss is what I call it, you know, mm -hmm. they, um, basically because they're not part of God's initial plan, they're the product of free will, basically, you know, they have to basically create a space within the creation to be able to express themselves, and the way they do that is by, like in this world, they create a context of money that pits people against each other or something. They're creating a field, a, a field, so they can grow plants for themselves, so that they can, because they're not uh, connected to the source of all creator, you know, the creator source, they, they can't provide the energy for themselves. Therefore, they use uh, the creation and the actual beings within the creation to provide them with the energy. So, you know, uh, they're like, um, you know, they're feasting on anybody, you know, they're feasting on everything, you know, that's, uh, because they can't get anything themselves on an emotional level, a physical level, a spiritual level, and, uh, you know, a mental level, on all the levels, you know, they're always feasting. So, you know, that's one of the other reasons why people need to get, you know, spiritually strong in themselves, and they need to start organizing together, you know, as a force for good as well, and creating an environment to counteract the negative environment, you know, of negativity and toxicity, you know, and poison and stuff. They need to create an environment, you know, and uh, proper go all out, you know, the full, uh, full power of the heart to bring that about into the now. And that's ultimately what Raise Needham is about, you know, empowering the individual individually and also to be able to produce and uh, organize together as a force for good collectively. Right. And <clears throat> the only way that you can do that, now let's get back to what you were saying before, in the beginning, the only way that you can do any of that is that the first thing you have to do is, is love yourself. 
and you have to stop worrying about what other people are doing <clears throat> and work about on what you're doing and and concentrate on yourself because what will happen is that that if you love yourself first then then you can love other people <clears throat> but you can also you'll project a, a better you and if you project a better you you're going to draw in better people so those people who say might be in your life and that, that are looking like they're going the other direction instead of trying to save them they can only save themselves or we as a collective will save everyone because the domino effect or the snowball effect as everybody goes on you have to understand that so instead of trying to take care everybody spends so much time trying to save everyone else that they're losing themselves and they don't know that's happening so the, the first thing you need to do is stop trying to save everybody else and remember and look at you who am I and and find the love for yourself there and at some point you're gonna find that some people around you um, you can't do anything about and you're gonna have to allow, allow them to figure out what's gonna happen to them on their own and I and, and maybe I'm wrong in saying that do you agree with that uh, with what I'm saying there yeah yeah it's, uh, it's it's absolutely true you know you can't save anybody else I mean even myself I uh, I <laughs> that's probably one of the hardest lessons for me about not being able to save anybody else other than yourself really because um, <clears throat> I almost died actually doing that I actually uh, was trying to save somebody else and I actually ended up um, you know once uh, it was a dark night of my soul basically a long time ago about 10 years ago now and um, <clears throat> you know I ended up actually you know almost dying and you know I had a car crash in which I broke my back you know and uh, I was in a car that exploded and I only just managed to uh, survive basically and, uh, you know, I, I even had to, like, get out of the car with a broken back and just try to, you know, save myself and stuff. But I remember just laying there and, uh, you know, the rain was, like, spitting down on my body and stuff, like, uh, just spitting. It wasn't raining that fast. And uh, I just remember, like, the embers of the flames of the fire, you know, <laughs> from the carnage that just ensued. And I just felt the most overwhelming sense of peace. And that's when I became aware that that overwhelming sense of peace and benevolence that had always been with me in my life was uh, it was me all along it was me it was always there and I was also as powerful and strong as I thought I was if not stronger because you know that was the test really for me and um, you know it just wow yeah yeah you know I just agree with everything you say so <laughs> Wow, see, that's that's incredible. You're lucky to be alive, right? That's just crazy. But you know what? It was that was the epiphany. That was the the point in your life when you realized that uh, if you try to save other people, and this is my point, what I'm trying to make is, is it could get to that point where if you're trying to save other people, you could end up uh, losing yourself, literally, and maybe even dying. So, so now I have another question. And it looks like it's a. It says, the Berg. What do you think about CERN? Is there a real danger there? Uh, well, CERN's a bit of a weird one because uh, you know the collider and stuff. It's uh, right. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I've seen a few videos like on the Mandela effect and stuff, it, but I don't. I don't. Um, <clears throat> from what I know about reality and stuff, they say that when they switched uh, CERN on, they created a different reality, and uh, and then there was like a Mandela effect with certain things within this timeline that changed or stuff. But the truth is that. Because there's a lot of people in this reality all collectively at the same time, although, yes, Switch and CERN on did create an alternative reality in which we're all within, we're creating and uh, constantly recreating reality every single second of moment, and every single thought, every single thing we do is creating a new reality. So the reality that uh, CERN you know, switched us onto by actually that small event of switching on, it's been superseded now by billions and trillions of you know human thoughts and uh, changing uh, timelines you know the, you know the timelines aren't set in stone they're completely shifting all of the time depending on what we do and we basically can uh, create and dream anything we want because we have the potential to align with a multitude of infinite possibility at any moment or any time within the timeline you know and so it's down to us it's down to us right now whatever we want we can create and that's going to be the future you know, just as what we're doing now, we're putting in the work, we're being present, you know, we're going out there and doing stuff, you know, if everybody was present to themselves, the world would be completely different, there would not be any more governments anymore, because there wouldn't be a space and a context for poison or any toxicity of mind to exist anymore, and that's what people need to do to solve the problem, just be present to themselves, always, you know, and one of the most powerful ways as well, that I think mentioned earlier, that I can mention now is, uh, make sure that each day you spend at least 10 minutes meditation in stillness, complete silence, you know. And also, make sure that on every single hour 
check in with yourself every single day as well. Make that connection to your higher self, because ultimately it's a higher consciousness that is going to get us out of where we're wanting to go. And as well, higher mm -hmm. consciousness connecting to something greater than yourself is also because uh, it's going to fulfill your uh, being as well with something, you know, with more energy than you've got capacity for. It's going to make you feel great and fulfill your being and fulfill you and make you feel good as well. So, you know, always take time out for yourself every day, you know, for at least 10 minutes. And if you don't think that you've got time for yourself that day, do it for 20 minutes. <laughs> right. Right. Now, <clears throat> when we were talking about CERN and the, and the collider, you had, you had mentioned the, the Mandela effect for... For those people who don't uh, know anything about that, can you touch on that a little bit and let people know what, what you meant when you said uh, the Mandela Effect? Yeah, well, the Mandela Effect is pretty similar to the, what we were speaking about earlier, which is like the butterfly effect, where, you know, one small thing can uh, shockwave out, you know, through like ripples within a pond, changing everything. The Mandela Effect is kind of like the uh, same similar thing. In the context of CERN, when they switched it on, that was a big event. Uh, you know, within um, that space of, let's call it, you know, the conscious living ocean of one. You know, when that was switched right. on, it created ripples, you know, ripples going around the pool and stuff. But the Mandela Effect, basically, people um, think that when they switched it on, certain events in the timeline was altered. So, like, um, saying they released, um, you know, a movie in, like, 1932 or something, then the movie, in our timeline now, people have the memory of it being released in 1932, but others have a different memory of it being released in 1935 or something. Right. Know? So it's pretty confusing. But, you know, although me personally, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that's true at all, <laughs> you know, judging right. by what I know, because, like I said, people are constantly collapsing reality every single split second, every single thought and everything. They're always creating a new potential, and there's an infinite amount of potentials every single moment and minute, you know, from everything that person's doing, and every thought that they do that can send reality off in a different direction. So, you know, it means that even if uh, it did create an alternative timeline, that, that there's so many trillions and billions and, you know, gazillions of timelines being created since then that it's not going to really affect anything anyway. So, you know, people need to stop worrying. <laughs> Right, and I apologize, I got the blower right outside my window right now, so bear with us for a second, guys, as we um, as we let that guy pass uh, my door here, uh, so my mic, I'm sure, is going to come on, you can't hear anything, so give us a moment here, while we wait for this guy, it should be done in a minute. Right <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. my window. <laughs> Even with the window closed, that's loud, right? <laughs> He was literally standing uh, two inches outside my window, facing away, so the exhaust was literally hitting my window, and the sound <laughs> is still coming straight through. I apologize. So, um, yeah, so just like you were saying with the butterfly effect, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, let me know, Daniel, if you can hear me okay even with that noise. Um, sorry, I think he's going to be hopefully done in a second. I apologize, people, for that. Um, that's just horrible. We have to... I have to look into making sure that on Mondays and Tuesdays we maybe try to schedule a little bit later or I'll go out there and give them one for it. Anyway, so <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> so but like you were saying with the, with the uh, reality and the, and the butterfly effect, and I, I think that uh, um, a lot of that, like, like you were saying, might be hooey anyways because um, some, I think the, our memory sometimes is askew and things change, although I have had uh, things happen where, uh, it, where I remember something happening a certain way and, um, and uh, the rest of the world had it happen a, a different way, and, and um, I've kind of pointed that out, but, it, but it, it, it was literally, like you were saying, a reality thing. I remember back here in America, uh, there's a in basketball here in America, there's a Los Angeles Lakers playing and uh in in history now they won three championships in a row um i watched them lose the uh third championship and not win it and not three peat and the next day when i woke up the headlines showed that they won and that it was a three peat and in history now they won that but i watched them lose that game horribly and not three peat I watched it happen, watched all the people in the arena uh, react to it, everybody, the broadcasters talking about it, and, and how they, they just fell apart at the end of the game and how they didn't win it, and now in history they did win it. So I have no explanation for that, but um, 
you know, maybe I maybe I dreamt it wrong. I don't know, but I know that when it happened, it happened, and I went, "Wait a minute, they lost!" And I looked it up, and they didn't. But I saw the blues, so I can't explain that. That's just a memory that I have in my head. And there's a few other ones uh, in, throughout time uh, that I've noticed different things have have changed slightly. But I don't know if that's just uh, you know Einstein's viewer created reality, or if it's a collective consciousness and we have changed things because we as a as a whole uh, and and correct me if i'm wrong we as a whole have have the ability to create to uh to do that uh and and fix that say like if we're concerned that cern created a, a reality well if it did it's the reality that we all moved into and we've accepted because if we didn't we would all change that reality and could just by all thinking the reality that we want to have am i wrong in that yeah, I mean, it's kind of true, but like, if people want a different reality, you know, they really do need to do the work, you know, because we're all in this together, you know, at the right. moment. So they need to collectively, consciously move forward, you know. I mean, you know, that's one of the problems. There's, uh, like I said, there's many domains that are intersecting within this world and stuff, you know. Like I said, there's the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. So you need to be able to, you know, work in all of them environments to bring something about, you know, to make the change and stuff. But uh, it's like we were saying earlier, though, you know, um, I remember as well, you know, if you want to bring something in just make sure that you uh, you're totally present and uh, to every being and you engage with every single being fully you know the full thing and uh, you know you can't save the world and you can't save right. another because attempting to do so is going to destroy you and it's also going to right. destroy them but right. you know for each journey back to the creator you know it's a personal one so you need to uh, you know do it on a personal level as well but you know although you can't save the world and you can't save another Again, you need to just slightly change the, the questions that you pose. It's the questions that you uh, ask that, uh, you know, have to be the right ones to be able to get the right information. Because it's like if you're asking the wrong question, it's kind of you're uh, creating a context where the answers aren't going to fix the, the problem because the question you've asked is the problem. You're asking the wrong question, if you know what I mean. So it's like you can't save the world and you can't save others, but you can heal the world heals people's thinking and be a healer, you know. Right. So. Right. Right. See, and, and now we're, we're, I'm getting the, the 90 minute we need to wrap. Uh, so we're running out of time. Uh, and it's it's horrible because I have more questions. Well, I have many more questions. <laughs> I'll talk to you longer. So um, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to have you back on when there's not guys outside my window doing this and <clears throat> so we can talk longer uh, and, and talk about more stuff. But um, quickly give us, uh, give us, if you have a website, give us a website. Give us the name of your, both of your books. Uh, tell us where we can find them. Uh, also, give us your uh, YouTube page and your Facebook page. Tell us, everybody, who you are, where we can find you. Hi, right, then. So, uh, my name's Daniel of Dunn. Uh, sorry, Daniel Dunn. And uh, I'm Daniel of Doria on uh, YouTube, which is all one word and two A's and stuff. And uh, that's also my YouTube channel, Daniel of Doria, which is two A's, you know, on YouTube, like it says. And uh, the first book is called Raising Eden, Wisdom of the Eternal, and that came out on the 5th of November, uh, just gone in 2016. And, um, you know, that basically covers absolutely everything with uh, emphasis on spiritual empowerment. And the second book is called Raising Eden, Volume 2, Wisdom of the Singular Truth. And that is also goes into, you know, everything as well, but with a more emphasis on direct spiritual empowerment and building a relationship with your higher self and stuff. But, it, it, you know, it covers everything as well in itself. And then the third book, I just only finished that like uh, two days ago. So I'm in the editing stage and doing the, uh, the cover art and stuff. So that'll be with everybody within the next few weeks and months. You know, so keep your eyes open, everybody. Definitely. And, uh, guys, go, go to our website, watchertalk.com, look at our events calendar. Uh, look for today. You can see that Daniel's there, and we have links uh, on our calendar for his stuff. So you guys can go check that out if if you couldn't hear with the guy out there. <laughs> right. So yeah. he's walking back and forth now, going across the street, and he's he's blowing everything. So it's just <laughs> the, the tailpipe is facing this direction, so it's even louder. So um, uh, anyway, I, it was a great, great conversation. Thank you uh, for for taking the time because I know that you don't normally like to do a lot of uh, interviews, and I hope that uh, this experience and the one that you had uh, on your other interview uh, will, will get you into where you like doing them more and you'll do them more because I'd love to have you back on here. Uh, you have another book that's coming out. Once that book hits the market, I'd love to have you back because it looks like it'll only be in a month or two. Let's have you back on here and talk again um, uh, and, and, and if we can uh, because uh, the people, 
I'm sure are going to want to hear what you have to say because I know that this is the message that all of us are putting together and that all of us are putting out there to the people and uh, and, and uh, everything that we're about here at Watchers Talk. And I and I know I can say that because I've talked to uh, everybody that's involved in this in this site of ours and our mindset and our friends' mindsets, the people that we're working with, Portal to Ascension, and you know Brian Forrester and and you know all the guys that we're talking to for, for uh, that we've interviewed uh, so far. Uh, you know, the, even the Strongs in Australia, everybody that we're talking to, Steve Meads, everybody that we're talking to, um, uh, all of the stuff, even Ildi, who's the manager of the Strongs, we, everybody we talk to, all is, is uh, we're realizing now that it's all coming back to this, which is exactly what you're talking about. And we all have to do that, and it's the only way that any disclosure is going to happen about any kind of aliens or any disclosure about, even if it's not aliens, and it's the history of us and where we came from, because we know they know it. We know they know it, and we know they're hiding it from us, and that history is in our DNA, and the history is in our memory, and the history is in us communicating with our higher self. And the only way that we're going to get there is through guys like Daniel, through guys like me, through guys like Omar, through Sherry, through all of us helping you guys who don't know how to do that. So you guys need to watch us, listen to us, and then, and then ask questions. Don't trust that everything we're saying is true. Go out there and find it for yourself and look on YouTube and look, look, and look for other people because that's how we found each other is looking for other people. That's how I found uh, Daniel, looking for other people uh, that are like-minded so that we could talk and so we could bring this information to you guys. So go to our website, guys. Take a look at our events calendar. You're going to see we have a chock full of a bunch of other people who think just like we do. And, and uh, you know, grab our app, download our app. Uh, if not, just, just subscribe to our uh, our uh, YouTube channel, and you get the information you want to see it live, unless we broadcast live on YouTube, which we do that sometimes. So you'll get you'll get a, t a ping then. Um, otherwise, guys, you know, do the work. Like Daniel just said, you have to do the work. It's not it's not going to just happen. The only way that you're going to evolve spiritually is that you're going to have to fix yourself. Love yourself first, then you can love the world. You can love everybody else, and then you can fix yourself. Daniel, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, thank coming you. on. Yeah, I'll definitely come great. back as well every few weeks or hey, months. <laughs> yeah, shit, don't don't hang up. Don't hang up when we get off because I know that uh, Omar's going to want to talk to you. Okay, so so stay yeah. on here. Uh, we'll wrap the show and then Omar will come on and then and then we can talk. Okay, so okay, guys, okay. Thanks, thanks for coming, people. Uh, this was a great show, and we're gonna, like, you just heard Daniel. He'll come back. So uh, keep it looking on our calendar, and you'll find him if you guys want to uh, find out what's going on with him. You can hear us when he comes back. So keep it looking on our calendar. Daniel, thank you. Great show, buddy. Stay tuned. Hold on right here. Okay. Thank you, Gordy.